lot of out of towners can't handle this city where you. I'm from L. A. All right. Clearly, the music is not acting right today, so we're just gonna go right into the video. That was Murs trying to get this rivalry week started off right. Um, but first, let's go ahead and just recap quickly what happened this week. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because obviously all that matters now is Saturday. Um, USC got back on track. They beat a pitiful Arizona State team. And they only allowed three points in the second half of Arizona State. So the defense woke up and realized that they could actually do well against an average team. And they found a way to respond. So big ups to the defense. But for me, the star of the game is Curtis McNeil. The former Venice High product had 163 yards, two touchdowns. Very good for him because I feel like sometimes Silas Red's kind of gotten more of the lion's share of the attention with him. Uh, let me turn my phone off. Silas Red's gotten the lion's share of the attention. So I'm really happy for the kid they used to call Moody. So big ups to him. And as usual, Matt Barkley had a record-setting day. He became the Pac-12's all-time leader in passing yards, and he threw for three interceptions. So, what can you say? I've already spoke about him, so congrats to Matt. Three interceptions speaks for itself. Um, looking ahead to UCLA, this was funny because I actually was watching this game. I was at a, I was at my, um, a party on Saturday night, so I got to watch this on my phone. And for a minute, I was kind of worried because the score was... <clears throat> Let me look this up real quick. And I was kind of surprised for a second. UCLA was actually up 14-7. to And I was kind of shocked. I was like, wait a minute. What's, what's taking so long here? It's 14-7. I don't understand what's going on here. Then all of a sudden, UCLA reminded themselves who they were. And decided to put up 30 in the second quarter on Washington State. Now, Washington State, granted, has had a rough week. Um, leading receiver Marcus Wilson left the team in protest to head coach Mike Leach running a, a very tight ship, and he gave some serious allegations against him. I'll post that link in the video description. So Washington State was in no mood to play football, in my opinion. Um, and UCLA probably put up 30 on them like it was nothing in the second quarter. Um, special teams showed up big. I mean, safety by Anthony Barr. A blocked field goal returning for an intercept. Returning for a touchdown, a blocked punt. I mean, these are kind of things I don't really see from UCLA. So that was a big step for them. And then UCLA almost gave that game back to Washington State by getting outscored 29-7 in the second half. Um, not really sure what to make about that, but hey, at least they won that game. So that kind of lapse can't happen because that might have been them looking ahead to USC. So what can you say about that? Um, oh, Look with thing, if Marquise Lee does not finish in the top five for the Heisman voting, something's wrong with the process. Because once again, he's showing why he is the best wide receiver in the country, and he's doing it pretty much almost effortlessly. He gets the ball, things happen. And to me, not only should he win a Boletnikoff, he should be at least in the top five for Heisman. You can't name five guys better than him in the country, in my opinion. And now, let's get to why we're really here. Rivalry week. <laughs> All right, so I sit on record that it's the first time in 14 years since 1998 that I've been excited about this game as a UCLA fan. I'm excited because I think UCLA has a great chance to win this game. But I'm not going to get too cocky and forget the fact that this is USC we're dealing with. So let's see. What do I expect from this game? Um, one... UCLA is not going to get beat 50-0. to zero. That's not going to happen again. We know that. Two, I think that Brett Hundley and Matt Barkley are going to pass for over 300 yards because neither of those teams' secondaries can stop a good quarterback. So I think that uh, they're going to have a field day passing the ball, and they're going to hear a lot of hype about, you know, this is the first time that UCLA and USC have had really, really good quarterbacks at the same time. Um, maybe since the 80s when it was Rodney Pete and Troy Aikman. And I think that's I think that's fair. I mean, UCLA, this is the best quarterback UCLA's had in 15 years. Matt Barkley's obviously the next great USC quarterback. And I think it's going to be, I think they're both going to show why. Um, what it's going to come down to, I think, is 
can UCLA stop USC's offense enough? USC may not be able to stop them, but can UCLA stop them enough? And I think secondary-wise, um, it's going to be hard to stop Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. I haven't seen the defense do that ever. <laughs> so I think it's going to be very hard to stop both of them. So you're going to have to just concede that they're going to get theirs. Um, the question is, can they make Matt Barkley make enough mistakes? Because we know Barkley's going to have his two interceptions per game probably over the last few weeks. He's going to have two interceptions, I bet, where he just forces the ball in. UCLA is going to make capitalize on it. I think this game is probably going to get won on the front lines. I mean, which line is going to step up the most? And I think both teams have great running backs that are going to really make a big impact. Jonathan Franklin is probably going to have a solid day. Silas Red and Mooney McNeil are going to have a great day. I think they're both evenly matched up. I, I really think they're both evenly matched up, except for USC having a bigger advantage at the wide receiver position. So, uh, you want me to make a prediction on this game, don't you? I really don't know what to say except that it's going to be close. It'll be the closest game since 2009, Barkley's first year when it was 28-7, to 7, I think. Um, it'll be a close game. I can't predict the winner right now. I mean, my heart wants to say UCLA can win this game, but my head is telling me USC finds a way to win. Um, I, I just can't pick a winner. I just can't. I, I will say that I think UCLA will make it competitive. And right about now, I think that's what I'll say. UCLA will make it competitive. USC is going to go in there, you know, try to prove themselves. And, by the way, there's more at stake than just rivalry. The winner of this game will win the Pac-12 South. If UCLA wins this game, they're going back to the Pac-12 Championship game. USC wins this game, they're going to the Pac-12 Championship game. And, if I'm not mistaken... Oregon and Stanford play this week as well, too. So the Pac-12 North is going to be at stake as well. So that game is going to happen, I believe, in the evening. So, yeah, it's going to happen in the evening. So we're going to probably have a better better, uh, we're going to have a better chance to see who's going to go to the Pac-12 championship game because <clears throat> whoever wins UCLA-USC will probably face the winner of Oregon-Stanford. That's how it's going to be. So it's a great thing for the Pac-12. It's going to be really fun to see what happens. I think Oregon's going to blow Stanford out of the water. So depending on what happens, USC can face Oregon again, or UCLA can face Oregon again in a rematch of the Pac-12 championship. But that's getting too far ahead of myself. I think that UCLA is going to have a better showing than I expect. I think USC's not going to go down fighting. So we'll see what happens. Um, it starts at noon. As soon as I get off work, I'm going to race to see it. You should too. And that's all the time we have. So... Good luck to both teams. Good luck to all the fans getting ready for this week. And uh, let's see if the music is actually going to work this time. Peace. I'm from L dot A dot California A hot. They got shade. Let me take you on the way. A lot of out of towners can't handle this city. Where you wear the wrong color and it can't get tricky. But that was 86.